Welcome back everybody. In this video we're going to find yet another exciting way of solving a system of equations. We've done this so many times now, but if you ever get a system of equations, whether it's two equations or three equations, we've found so many different ways to solve these now. If you remember, we could either do it by substitution. And if you remember, that's when you take one equation, solve for one of the variables, and plug it into the other equation and try to solve the other variable. We could do what we called elimination, or sometimes it's called addition, where you want to try to add both equations together to try to eliminate one of the variables. And now we've got another really, really exciting way that we can use using matrices. What's going to use is going to use a little bit of our inverse matrix that we learned last time. Okay, so our goal today is can we still solve for a system of equations, but now instead of using these other ways that we've learned before, can we now use matrices since they're so fun and so easy to use? So I'm going to skip ahead. This is still section 7.3 because we're talking about inverse matrices, but let me jump ahead to where we left off. After we found the inverse, now look we can do another way of solving system of equations. Very, very cool. Our goal immediately is to take a system of equations with their, all their variables and translate them into a matrix equation that looks like this, where the A matrix is made up of all the coefficients in front of the X's and the Y's. The X is the matrix we're solving for. It is our variable and it's made up of all the variables in the equations, X, Y, Z. And then usually on the right hand side of all of the equations you have the equal sign and you have the solutions. So this is going to be called the solution matrix. And like we learned a couple times ago, when we tried to solve this for x, remember the one step we tried to take? We tried to divide by a, but we couldn't divide by a because remember we can't divide in matrix land. So the one way to do that was to skip that step by taking the a inverse and multiplying that on both sides. And we learned that when we did the A inverse, A inverse times the A canceled and gave you one or the identity matrix. And so you're left with just X is equal to A inverse on the left times B, which is basically this formula right here. So burn this into your hard drive because this is really an important, important answer here. Anytime you want to solve for X and we're using solutions of uh, systems of equations or just matrices, to solve for x, we're going to need to find the inverse of the A matrix and multiply on the left of the B matrix. And that's it. So let's still start slow a little bit. If I give you a system of equations here, and just start with a very simple example. All right, do you see where all the coefficients are? In front of the x, there's, well, there's nothing, but it means there's a 1. In front of the y is a negative 2. Over here is a 2, and over here is a negative 3. So if I take those four numbers, that's what's going to constitute my A matrix. You see how the A matrix is made up of all of those coefficients? So this is our coefficient matrix. What are the variables we're trying to solve for? Well, we have x's and y's, so we're going to make an x and y variable matrix, just like this. And there's a reason why it looks like this and not a one by two matrix. We'll explain that in just a sec. We prefer the two by one. Now, what about all the answers on this right side that we haven't used? That's our B matrix. Notice we have a two by one B matrix. And so if I want to turn it into an AX equals B, which is our goal, it would look just like this. Here's our A matrix on the left. Here's our X matrix of all the variables, and there's our B matrix on the right. So basically, this looks like A times X equals B. Now, how, how does that actually really be the same as that? Well, before we go forward, can we just check and see? Let's actually take this AX that you see here, friends, and let's actually just multiply that out. Let's just see what we get when we multiply that out. Now, that's a 2 by 2 matrix and you're multiplying a two by one, so that should be legal because the inner numbers are matching and the outer numbers tell me that my answer should be a two by one. Well, let's do that. Let's actually multiply the A and the X matrix just for the heck of it and see what we get. You ready? Rows by column. So row on the left, 
with the column x on the right. That should be 1 times x plus negative 2 times y. Okay, that's the first entry. And then on the bottom underneath it should be, well, row 2 on the left and the column on the right should be 2 times x plus negative 3 times y. All right, there's my 2 by 1 matrix. And if I just bring this guy back, remember the two matrices are equal. So if the two matrices are equal, that means the corresponding entries are equal. And do you notice that if I set the left equal to the right, can you see that I just actually made the entire top formula again right here? Right up here, friends. Okay, so that's why I just want to go backwards to show you why it really works. Our goal again is to change it so it looks just like this. And AX equals B. So then I can use my magic formula that we talked about on the previous page to solve for X matrix or to solve for X and Y. We do the A inverse times B. So we have to find A inverse first. So the inverse of this friend. And then we're going to multiply it by this friend over here, the B matrix. Let's try it. So first we have to find the inverse of A over here. Can we do that first? You guys are really good at that now. Remember, we're going to find the determinant. So determinant of A, that's down right minus down left. And we're in luck if you see it because actually the determinant should be 1. You can double check that with the, all the negatives. So that means A inverse, once I scramble the matrix, should be 1 over the determinant. And my scrambled matrix, the 1 and negative 3 flip places. And the negative 2 and 2 just change signs. And since I'm just multiplying by 1, that doesn't really change anything. So my A inverse, guys, is negative 3, 2, negative 2, and 1. All right. So now by our formula, what we should do on the bottom of the page is we should take that A inverse matrix that we found here, and let's multiply it by B on the right. Well, B was right over here. This is our blue circled matrix. So we're going to multiply that into my A inverse. Come on down here, A inverse friend. A inverse B times B should be, let's see, our A inverse was negative 3, 2, negative 2, and 1. I'm going to multiply that by the B matrix, which was 5, 10. And that was the sort of solution matrix that we made at the beginning. All right, this is totally legal, 2 by 2. Multiplying a 2 by 1 should work. So I should get rows on the left and columns on the right. I should get negative 15 plus 20 is. And then from row 2 and the same column on the right, I should get negative 10 plus 10. And I should get good. Now that should be my X matrix. And remember, the X matrix is made up of the variables we're solving for, X and Y. So basically, if x is equal to xy, and x matrix that we solve for numbers are 5, 0, can you guys see that my solution is, and, and there you go. Or we could write it as a coordinate pair of 5, 0. Either way is OK. But should we just double check really quick, friends? Can we plug it back into the front? top part of the equation and see if we have it here. So let me make a little space so we can do that. Go ahead. Why don't you plug in 5 for x and 0 for y and see if you get 5. 5 for x, 0 for y, and see if you get 10, and you do. So to recap, you take a system of equations and you're going to rewrite it so it looks like a x equals b, where the a were all the coefficients in front of the x's and y's, the x are the variables you're looking for, x and y. And notice how we made it into a 2 by 1 matrix. And the b matrix are all the solutions on the right-hand side. Once you turn it into the ax equals b equation, then we can solve by using our fancy formula here. Find the inverse of a and multiply it by b. There you go, friends. Anytime that we need to see that we need to possibly divide a matrix out, we do the opposite by doing the inverse on both sides. So A inverse times B is your best friend. Good job, everybody.